Urban Street 420. I'm your host, 40. So today we're doing something different. I'm going to show you how to create mandalas in Photoshop. When you get stoned, sometimes what you're looking for is a creative outlet so you could just let the juices flow, baby. This is fun. It allows you to de-stress. It allows you to go crazy. It allows you to be creative. Why not give it a go, right? So I made this right before I started to record the, the tutorial, and I did it in about 20 minutes, huh? So it's super easy to do. You don't need a lot of skill. You will be able to do this after practicing once or twice, no problem. Maybe even on your first try. So I'm going to create a document, and we're going to get started. We'll try to recreate something similar to this, huh? I'll go up to File, and I will select New. After I select New, I'm going to set the... From pixels, I'm going to change it over to inches, and I'm going to set it to 8 by 8. We're going to set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch, and that way, if I want to uh, print this on an 8.5 by 11, I will be able to do so, right? And then cut it out or do whatever I want with it, right? Now, once this is open, let's go ahead and press B on our keyboard to select the brush tool. I'm going to talk about some of the things that we're going to use for this tutorial. So I can't teach you all of Photoshop in one tutorial, period. You can check out my other channel, 40TV. I have the uh, Photoshop tutorials on there if you'd like to learn more. And of course, there's, they're all over YouTube, right? But I'll go over the stuff that I think uh, would be pertinent to making mandalas. So the brush tool is really what creates mandalas, right? There's a couple things you need to know. Up here in smoothing, let me show you. I'm using my mouse right now. I tried to record this video with my tablet connected. Uh, I have a Wacom uh, drawing tablet, and unfortunately there was so much lag I just gave up, so we're going to do this with a mouse, which in reality is probably better, because most of you are going to use mouses. Mice. Mouses. Jesus. Anyway, so if I try to draw some kind of uh, line or whatever, and I'm like trying to make it as smooth as possible, look what happens, right? Now, if I crank the smoothing up here to 50, for example, and I try to create that same set of balls or, or curved lines or whatever, it gets better. And what I, we, I'm going to press Command Plus on my keyboard, which is going to zoom in. If I press Spacebar right now and left-click my mouse and drag down, I can now reposition what we're looking at in the canvas, right? Now, what if I crank the smoothing all the way up to 100 and I start to draw, right? And I'm just doing, you know, like some similar design. I mean, if this is his balls, then this guy should go to the doctor, right? Anyway, but look at the, look how much smoother the line is around the corner, like whatever. You'll see like the variations right here, here just are off, huh? So uh, that's what smoothing is all about. Uh, we're going to set this probably to be 40. And over here, the last option is our mandala or symmetry options. It's really the symmetry option. And there's a lot of different options. We're not going to get into all of them. Play with them. They basically separate the canvas in different ways and allow you to create a kaleidoscope kind of effect while you draw with your brush. We're going to set it to mandala. We're going to set the segment count to 10. And we're going to say OK. I'm going to press Command-0 on my keyboard, which will fit the canvas to our view, and I'm going to come down to one of the corners of this box, right? You'll notice that the cursor changes. I'll press Option on my cl keyboard, click and drag, and that is going to resize the box based on its center point, right? I'll press Enter on my keyboard to commit the changes. Do not try to fit this into a perfect square when you're resizing it. If you do, the center points of our guidelines will be off. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. <laughs> Next, we want to get rid of what's there. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here. I'll select the background layer, press Command A, press Delete on my key, uh, keyboard, and the fill contents will set it to white and select OK. Now on this new layer, this layer one, while we have it selected, you'll notice up here I have another document open called Leaf. Now, leaf is just a cannabis leaf I found through Google search. You can find one yourself there, etc. I'll press Command D on my keyboard, which deselects whatever the current selection is. And now, if I select the magic wand by pressing W on our keyboard or selecting it over here, with the tolerance set to 15, tolerance is how many colors outside of the current pixel you're selecting. So this is pretty uniform right here. If I click anywhere here, it's going to select all this white color or off-white or whatever. If I press Command-Shift-I, then it's going to inverse that selection, meaning select everything that's not selected. You could, of course, come up to select and select inverse. 
Now the, the, the cannabis leaf is selected. I'll press Command C on my keyboard and we'll come back over to our new document. In our new document, I'll press Command V, which will paste that into our new document. One of the things you'll notice is we don't see our guidelines. So I'll press B on my keyboard, which selects the brush tool, and now we can see it, right? We want to move this leaf up, but before we do so, let's resize it. I'll press Command T on my keyboard to bring up the transform, transform tool. I'll press Option while selecting one of the corners, right? And clicking and dragging inward to resize it based on its center point. Notice we didn't move it off of its uh, vertical uh, axis. I'll press enter to commit the changes and here we are. As soon as we change to the move tool by coming up here and clicking on it or selecting V on our keyboard, notice our guidelines go away. So how are we gonna get around that? If I press B on my keyboard, with my finger touching my screen, I can decide where I'm gonna move this. Now I can select the move tool and you can't see me doing this, but I'm gonna drag this up and as long as I stay on those purple lines up to where my finger is on my screen, then I moved it up within the guidelines. I'll press B on my keyboard and to verify, and that's exactly what it was. If you didn't see those magenta color lines, you'll come up to view, you'll go down to show and select uh, smart guides. Now, this is here so that we have something to reference as we draw. We're gonna change the name of the layer one by double clicking and we'll call it leaf. Let's create a new layer by coming over here and pressing on the plus sign. Alternatively, you could come up to layer, new layer, right? So on this new layer, we're going to change the name of it. We're going to call it Mandala. And we are going to zoom in. Press Command Plus on your keyboard a few times. You'll notice that we're at 300% zoom, it says right here. Depending on the size of your screen, I'm working in a much smaller uh, resolution so that this all, uh, I'm working in actual size, right, in 1080. My screen is much larger than that, but uh, so the, your, your zoom level will be based on whatever resolution you're working in. If I press spacebar, that brings up the hand tool. While holding spa uh, the spacebar, I can click and drag and move my canvas around uh, by ho just holding the spacebar and left clicking and dragging. Anyway, so I'm gonna let go of the spacebar and now we have our leaf right here that's relatively on that line. In fact, if we select the move tool, maybe we move it over one or two to the left. And I did that by pressing the left arrow keys, right? I'll click on the B to bring it back up, and it looks like it should be moved maybe one more to the left, right? Or two. Press B, and I'm trying to line this up, but it doesn't look like it's moving. Huh? Oh, because I was moving the mandala layer. <laughs> All right, so let's delete this layer just because I don't know how many times I clicked. We'll come up to layer. We'll select new layer. Boom. We're going to call it mandala. Mandala. Press enter. On the leaf layer, we're gonna press V on our keyboard to bring up the move tool. We'll press one time to, your le to our left. We'll press the B uh, key, and we'll notice that we line this up more in the center of that line because this leaf is just going to be a reference for us. If we select the mandala layer, while the brush tool is selected, you'll notice that the size of the brush is set to 10 right here. We can use the left and right bracket keys to change the size of our brush to whatever we want. We're gonna leave it at 10 for now and we're gonna come up here and we are going to draw, right? Now remember our smoothing is set to 40. We had it set earlier. If you don't have this set to some type of percent above zero, your lines may not look as clean or crisp. So go ahead and change that if you need to, right? Now the thing is, the higher the number, the more the lag between your strokes. So if you click and you drag, you may bring it here. Next thing you know, the line is going to continue past. So I'll do, give you an example. If I come here, look how far it just kept going, right? I'm going to press Command-Z on my keyboard. So just uh, draw a bit slower and you should avoid that issue. If we want to stop here, we could just stop our mouse right there and wait for it to catch up. Now let's go ahead and we're going to finish out this leaf. Press Command Z whenever we want to redo something that we just did. So something like this. And you know what? I'm not worried about any of the black that's inside of the leaf because we're going to fill it with black. So again, we're going to click and drag here. We're going to click and drag there. We're going to click and drag here. Now, uh, right here, we're just going to click and we are going to draw a line huh? like that. 
Now we can't use the paint bucket tool to fill this because it won't work on all the symmetry. If we want to fill this in, we actually have to uh, fill it in with the brush. Otherwise, it's not going to fill in the other leaves that are within our symmetry. So I'm just clicking and dragging here. Remember, we have that smoothing turned on, plus I'm doing a screen capture. So my computer is uh, being a little bit like a baby, huh? It's, uh, I mean, it's so funny. I swear, Apple slows their computers down so dramatically over time. I have a really nice computer, but it just keeps getting slower lately. And I don't, I don't get it, huh? Like, this is a super, super nice computer. It should not be slowing down. But they do this, so you go buy their new shit. I hate it. Anyways, venting done. So now we have this. Let's see what it looks like in our mandala. I'll press Command-0 on my keyboard, and boom, zoom out. We could hide the layer of the leaf over here by clicking on the eyeball and boom, it's hidden. So this is where we are currently at, right? Now we gotta decide what we wanna do next. I'm gonna zoom in by pressing Command Plus a couple times, press the space board, space board, the space bar, while left clicking and dragging down to reposition my canvas. And we are just gonna work in this area right here for now, right? So I think the first thing we're going to do is we are going to attempt to draw this next part, which comes out like so, and it comes down here. Now, see, this is one of the problems is this stupid thing is lagging quite a bit, and I'm just going to overlap, right? So we're going to undo that by pressing Command-Z, and then we're going to come here, and we're going to try to have a bit more patience, and we are trying to see. Hopefully it didn't overlap, right? And you'll notice with the beach ball, right? Jeez. Anyways, so you know what? I actually wanted to have it closer. I'm going to use my hand, my finger as a guide to find out where that center is between this line and this line. This center is what I want to try to go to. So I'm going to put my finger right where this dot is right now. I'm going to press Command Z on my keyboard. And now I'm going to draw knowing that I want to go to where my finger is, right? Now, that maybe won't touch exactly, but that's okay. So that is a lot better than what I had done, and I like that, huh? Next, let's come underneath here, and we're going to click, and we're going to drag something similar. And we're going to go a bit further down, like so. Now, another thing that we can do is we can start filling this with some dots. By pressing on the left and right bracket keys, we can change our brush size, and we can see in our preview the size of that brush, right? So I'm going to click once here, and being in the center, that just made one dot, right? But now when we come over here, I'll enlarge it slightly, and we'll keep that brush maybe for two clicks. Then I'll make it smaller, then I'll make it smaller, and we'll keep the size for a few, maybe almost to the end and maybe make it smaller now. Oops, press Command Z because I didn't like it wasn't centered. Now again, how perfect you make this is entirely up to you. And how big the dots, the dots could all be uniform if you wanted, etc. So now we have this piece right here. It's looking, looking good, baby. Now let's go ahead and repeat this little design, but a, a little bit further down. Again, we need to find out where the center point is somewhere here. So let's just click and drag and it's right there. Now I can hold my finger right here, press Command Z, and this is where I wanna draw to. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna come back down and I'm gonna try to go to where my finger is. There we go, something like that. It's okay with me that these lines are not touching. We could of course make them touch by going here, and clicking in like that. And that's fine too, right? So now let's come back underneath here and let's click and let's drag and we are coming out to be something like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Let's add some dots. Changing the size of our brush here, something like so, go smaller. And I'm gonna stop talking. I'll just put the, the dots in. All right, see, I noticed I, I pressed Command-Z twice because what I was thinking of doing is doing something right here. And maybe I just make this a bit smaller and now press once. Now, if I press Shift on my keyboard and click again, it's going to draw a line from the last point that was, or the last point that was drawn. All right, so there we go. That's looking pretty cool, baby. Now, let's go ahead and try to tie these puppies together. So maybe something where we take this and we click once and then press shift and click here, right? Now, if we come here, clicking there and then press shift and click there, now we've just done that. But you might be saying to yourself, these lines are not thick enough. So let's press command Z twice. I'm gonna go ahead or one more time. 
And we're going to press uh, with our bracket keys to make it bigger. So something like that. I did it two more. Maybe I think that this was 10. Huh? So let's go back to 10. Something like that. So we'll click here. We'll come down here. We'll, uh, by holding shift and clicking again, we'll draw that straight line. We'll click once here. Holding shift, clicking, boom, it draws that straight line. Now we can fill these with dots if we want. Or what we can do is we can make lines. So I'll click once, press shift. Boom. Click once, press shift, boom. So what I'm doing is just putting one dot, holding shift on my keyboard, then coming right here and clicking again, and it draws a line from the first dot to wherever my cursor was next, right? I'm just going to repeat this process coming down, and we are definitely not doing exactly the same as we did before, uh, but we are doing something pretty cool, right? So another uh, one challenge here, if we're going to draw something circular, one challenge is that to do, do this with a mouse or even, to be honest, even with a Wacom tablet is difficult. However, if we have a guide, it will be easier. I'm going to click on the plus to create a new layer. I'll drag this under the mandala layer and we're just going to call this circle guide, right? I'm going to come over here to my color swatches, right, on the left, and instead of black, I'm going to click on black, and we're going to change it to red by clicking and dragging up into this corner and selecting OK. Now, it doesn't have to be red. It could be whatever color you want. Let's make sure over here in our marquee selection, it's set to the circle. You can press M on your keyboard to get there, and if it's selected, if it's set to the rectangular marquee, press Shift M, and it will cycle through the different marquee selection options. Now, if we want to draw some type of circle in here, maybe the best thing that we can do is come here in the center, right? Press Option on our keyboard, and that is going to draw a circle from that, that point. If we then press Shift while we're still holding everything down, that is going to make it a circle. So maybe something like this, right? This is just a selection. Nothing is there. If we press Option Delete, it's going to fill with whatever the foreground color is over here. Now, mind you, I'm not explaining every little step here because you know what? I think in reality, I, I'm just going over the things that you need to know potentially and anything else, you know, you're going to have to learn Photoshop as you go. We'll come over here to the circle guide. I'm going to press Command J on my keyboard. And what that's going to do is duplicate that layer. So everything that was on it is now. So if we select the circle guide below, we'll come over here to its little icon press uh, command or control if you have a PC, click on that and it is going to select this area, right? Now we can change the color from red, let's switch it to blue, say okay, press option, delete, and now it filled it with blue. We can verify that by, uh, by hiding layer one right here, right? So what we wanna do now with this circle guide selected, the one that we made blue, we're gonna press command T, which is gonna bring up our transform, right? Now we're going to come over to here, one of the corners, press Option, and we're going to drag this out. It's going to make a larger circle underneath. I'll press Enter. Remember, these two are just guides right now, right? I'll press Command-D on my keyboard, and what we want to do is just take this the, the blue line, basically, right? So we're going to click back on the mandala. We're going to change, we're going to press D on our keyboard. And notice over here the color swatch is what happens. When I press D, it puts it to the default colors, black for the foreground, white for the background. We're going to press B on our keyboard to bring back the brush tool. And what we want to do is draw this out from the center. So I'm going to come right here in the center. I'm going to click and I'm going to try to draw this as smooth as possible. It's super difficult, huh? That for sure is not that smooth, but we're going to call it okay. I'm going to do the same thing right here and something like that. And notice it went over, so I'm gonna press Command Z. Now, if you created a new layer every time you did something, it would be way easier to clean things up, and ideally, that's probably the best bet, right? But uh, I didn't do that. I'm gonna press Undo. Maybe what we can do, actually, is I'll create kind of like a heart, not really a heart, but kind of, right? Or maybe a butt, I don't know what we'll call it. So I'm gonna come right here, and I'm gonna come up like I'm making a heart, and then I'm going to come around and we're going to follow the circle from there. All right. So maybe that's like a butt or <laughs> a pair of nuts or I have no idea. Huh? Anyway, so now another thing that we can do is we can leave that empty or we can come over here and we can, um, 
we can say, we could write something in this, right? So maybe let's change the brush size, make it smaller, press command uh, plus to zoom in a bit, and let's come here, come down, we're gonna come over, and we're gonna come like this, and we're gonna write 420, right? There we go. I don't know why I had to get quiet just so I hopefully don't make any mistakes, but you know, I'm bound to make some, right? Now we could come right here and maybe do something like this and then come right here in the center and put a few dots, right? Something like that. Now we can get, come over here, you see layer one and circle guide. We can hide them by clicking on the visibility or we could select one, press shift, selecting the other, which will select all of them in a series, and they're right next to each other, so it just selected them two. We'll come over here to the trash can, press, uh, click on it, which is the delete, we'll say yes, and now they're gone, right? Make sure we have the mandala layer selected, and this is where we are at. Maybe what we can do is draw some more lines in here or some dots, so maybe we'll add a dot here, and we will make them get bigger as we go, and like so something like this. Now we'll bring it back down and we will create these lines. And again, there's no right or wrong. Do whatever you want. The, the cool thing is, I'm telling you, you could spend hours on this. And right now we're, we're doing something that we are really drawing in. You could just drag your mouse and go crazy and it's, it's gonna come out cool also, right? I'll press Command Zero on our keyboard and we can see what we're currently working with, right? Now let's bring some more, uh, let's do some more stuff, right? I'm gonna press Command Plus a few times so we can zoom in. I'll press uh, the space bar to, and click and drag to reposition. I wanna find out where the center point is between these lines, so I'm gonna click and it's right there. So now knowing this, I think maybe right here is where I wanna be, somewhere around there. So I'm gonna click Command Z a few times to get rid of what I just did, but now I know where the center point is and I can click and I can drag like that. Press Command Z to undo and maybe I actually come from here and I come up, something like that. And I had my finger on the, the screen so I knew where it was going to, right? Another option is we can come over here where it's like the middle which I guess is not there. I'll press Command Z, maybe it's right there. Now I click once, and I press Shift, and I click right here, and boom, we created these lines, right? Uh, now we can either fill these with lines, we could put nothing in them, we can even make zigzags. If I click once, press Shift, click, and I'm holding Shift down, and I'm just clicking, right? Now at this point, it's drawing straight lines between every time I click, right? And there I didn't touch all the way, and we're gonna say, who cares, right? So here and then come up there. There we go. Now, maybe what we want to do is come over here to the top of our leaf and we are going to draw in maybe kind of like a, a dome thing. I don't know if that's what we'd call it. Did I take that too far? I did. I'm going to press Command Z, right? We'll redo that one more time and come back down and stop right there. I'm still holding the button down, right, until it catches up. There we go. That's exactly what we were looking for, right? <laughs> I'll press space bar, click and drag, and let's do that again, maybe from right here. And you see the lag really screws it up. Look how ugly this lines are. I'm gonna press Command Z, let's do it one more time. Maybe we could do this faster, and I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna stop right there. And let's see, because I let go of the mouse, let's see if it goes exactly where I want it to stop. It did not, but we that's an easy fix it looks like, right? Something like that. And this is not perfect, right? I think if I wasn't doing a screen capture, this wouldn't be lagging right now and I wouldn't have that issue. You probably won't either. Let's create some dots in here and keep this puppy going, baby. So I'm gonna click once, click once, click once. Now uh, let's make it bigger, bigger now. No, maybe not. We'll just keep that same size. And of course, it would be cool if these were totally centered and some of them are, some of them are not, right? Now we'll make the circle bigger. And we're pressing the uh, bracket key to change the size of the brush whenever we wanna change the size of the brush, right? So again here, again here, and here we're gonna make this smaller, 
boom, okay? I'm gonna press Command-0 on my keyboard to fit everything to screen. It's looking pretty good, and I think you guys get the gist of it. I'm gonna do one thing that, has, that, that we hadn't done. I'm gonna come over here, and you see where the mouse is, right? I'm gonna click, and I'm going to draw like something just that I had no idea what I was gonna do, right? All I did is I clicked and I dragged and I dragged, right? I'm gonna press Command Z because I think that was a, the brush size was too big. So I'm gonna press a small a left bracket once and let's try this one more time. Actually, let's start from here. We're gonna come up and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna come like this and we're gonna come like this. All right, maybe something like that. I don't know, there's no right or wrong. Just have fun with it. Remember the leaf, we'll come back over here to the document, we'll press Command C to copy it again. We'll come back over here, we'll press Command V, and it's going to paste that leaf, right? If I press Command T, it's gonna bring up the transform. I can come to one of the corners of the transform, hold Option on my keyboard, click and drag to resize this, right? So maybe something like this, so it totally fits in there. I'll press enter. Then I wanna drag this up a little bit. So I'm gonna to switch to the move tool and I'm just gonna press shift and up, right? And that moved it up, I think five pixels, even though that's not totally center, I think it looks better, right? Now, if we come over here to this new layer, layer one, this is the leaf, huh? the new one that we just uh, pasted. If I click on the, or while the thumb, I'm hovering over the thumbnail, I press command and I click on the thumbnail, it is going to select uh, whatever that thumbnail is, right? Or whatever that layer is. Now, with black as my foreground color, I'm gonna press option, delete, and it's going to fill my selection with the foreground color. I'll press command D to deselect everything. And let's call this puppy done. I mean, it looks pretty cool, right? Now, I'm gonna show you one other thing that I didn't show you when we were uh, in the preview, right? So if we switch between the two, they're different, but uh, they're similar, right? Now, so one thing that we can do, we can make all of this one layer. By being on the top most layer here, if I press Command, Shift, uh, Option, and uh, E, what that does is it merges everything together in a copy on a new layer, right? Mind you, if you're using a PC, Command and Control are interchangeable, right? So if I ever say Command Z to undo, uh, it would be Control Z on a PC, right? Now to verify this, I can hide everything but this layer, and now this layer is as such, right? Let's create a new layer over the layer we just created, and we're, let's double click on this and call this final. We'll create a new layer above it. We're gonna call this color. And this is just something fun to show you, right? So I'm gonna change the color from black. I clicked over here on the foreground color black. I'm gonna set it to red. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna click on B for my brush. After I do that, I'm gonna change the size and we wanna turn symmetry off. So we'll come over here and we'll click on symmetry off, cool. And now we're gonna change the size from 10 pixels to, I don't know, let's say 300. We'll set the har uh, hardness to maybe zero. And now, I don't know if you'll see how big it is. Yeah, you can, you can see how big it is. If we press right bracket, now this is 500 pixels, pixels. Let's just click and drag some red in there, right? Now I'm gonna come over here, click on the red, and I'm gonna select the blue, right? Now after I do that, I'm gonna come here and I'll click and I'll drag, right? My computer is taking its time. It wants to paint, it wants to draw. Come on, baby. Oh, maybe one thing we could do is turn the, the smoothing off, right? So set the smoothing to 0%. I'll click on blue, let's select some yellow, and let's go like this. Maybe adding it here, there, there, We'll click on yellow again, and then we'll switch it maybe to like an orange or something like that. We'll come here, we'll come there like this, like that. And I don't know, there's no right or wrong. You notice all I've done is just make all these color swat, like junk of color, right? If I come over to the color layer, I right click and I select create clipping mask. What it's going to do is only gonna show that color where the piece below exists. One of the reasons that this did not work is because when we merged this, we merged it with the background layer, which was solid white. So there's nothing really to clip this to because it's all one, one solid mass. If I unselect this, 
I come back down and I turn on this layer and this layer. Notice, uh, and I'm going to turn off the, the color layer too. So I just have the leaf and I have this mandala layer. Now if I press Command Shift E, it's going to make a, a new layer with all that that was selected and I can hide those. Notice final is hidden. I'm going to drag this above final, right? I'm going to right click on it and say release uh, clipping mask. I'm going to select the color layer, right click on it and say create clipping mask. Now if this was confusing to you, this is obviously optional. You don't have to do it. I'm sorry if I made that confusing. If I did, I can go ahead and make another tutorial explaining that. Just let me know in the comments. Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you found it informative, useful, fun, funny, I don't even care. Just share it with your friends, baby. It would mean the world to me. Until next time, I'm out.